I met you at the demonstration today for Syria, for Assad. Why are you here today? Okay, uh, it is very long story, but I'll try to make it short. I think people in the West are misled. It is the same story like weapons of mass destruction in, in Iraq. Uh, people, all people all over the world believe there's, there are weapons of, mis uh, of mass destruction in Iraq when they didn't find them. The same thing is they are saying that President Assad is killing his people, is killing children, is killing women, destroying, killing his people. It is all lies. It's the same true story like weapons of mass destruction. Uh, people are trying to fight an excuse to uh, wage a war against Syria. I'm here to support my country and to see if I can some, see a wise person like yourself who is happy to listen to me and uh, uh, help me for my voice to reach, to reach other people. Have you wondered why they want to attack Syria? Some time ago I met with a person who by mistake came to our side our side, we are supporting the peaceful reform under President Assad. We are not supporting the person. We, are, we think the best opportunity for Syria is to allow and give the opportunity for President Assad to implement, to implement his reform. Uh, uh, and I think it's the best option for, for our country. Well, you have some Syrians who are angry and upset with the government. Is that, is that true? It's true. I mean, we have, I mean, uh, we, uh, Syria is not an ideal country. We have some we have corruption. What we have mistakes were made? What mistakes were made? What what should Syria have done differently? Uh, I will I will I will tell you quick things. Most people they don't know about Syria. In Syria, it's free education, including higher education. You can you can become an engineer. You can become a pharmacist. You can become a doctor without paying a single penny for your higher education. It's free health care. Similar to England in a way, it's not, it's not the same star there, but it's the same. And something I'll ask you, uh, yourself and your viewer who's seeing me, how do you explain that the international debt, the foreign debt for Syria is zero? I would like just to give a, a Syrian would like the best possible to people to think about Syria and to, to, logically. to think logically and, and not to believe everything they see on Western media. The Israel lobby tries to portray Jewish Canadians as members of a monolithic community that supports Israel and Zionism. In reality, however, many Jews denounce Israeli crimes against the Palestinians as well as its warmongering policies against Iran. In fact, Jewish groups, particularly independent Jewish voices of Canada, have played a major part in organizing rallies against the war with Iran. The US and Israel accuse Iran of pursuing a military nuclear program and have used this pretext to threaten an attack on the country. However, Iran is a signatory to the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty maintains that its nuclear program is for peaceful purposes. There's been no evidence that Iran uh, has any nuclear weapons. Um, <laughs> And it's ironic that, I mean, Israel has a very large nuclear stockpile and also has the backing of the United States, which has the world's largest nuclear stockpile. Iran is, is the one who's being targeted with all these sanctions when Israel is the one that has several hundred nuclear warheads. Israel is the one who never signed on to the non-proliferation -prol treaty and therefore is not subject to any of the supervision of the IAEA. It's Iran who's subject to these supervisions, right? Activists say that the media campaign against Iran has also helped Israel mask its treatment of the Palestinian people. I, I think the other issue issue at play here is that Israel Netanyahu wants to distract from the attacks uh, against innocent Palestinian civilians, against the occupation, against the continued expansion and building of new settlements. These are all serious violations of international law. Any Jews who dare to speak out get attacked. I've gotten attacked um, by, by Israel lobby pe people and um, you know, just like non-Jews get attacked, you know, no, all the MPs are terrified of speaking out against against Israel in any way. While there has been much media speculation on whether Israel will attack Iran in the coming months, however, there has been little discussion on why Iran is being demonized and sanctioned in the first place, and why Israel can continue to expand its stockpile of nuclear warheads without interruption. Now about that military option that we mentioned. Mark Phillips is in Tel Aviv and he tells us how Israel is preparing. The Israeli military has been practicing for what many here fear is the inevitable, a confrontation with Iran. 
At this drill, they rehearse decontaminating victims of a chemical weapons attack. Here, rescue workers search for survivors after a missile attack that would be expected to come from Iran or its allies on Israel's borders, Hezbollah in Lebanon and Hamas in Gaza. The commander of this unit, Lieutenant Colonel Jonathan Raz, says these exercises have a new sense of urgency. But are, are things more tense now because of... Uh, I think in the Middle East, it's always, always tense. Always tense. Always tense. And getting tenser. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has now told Israel's parliament he's prepared to act alone in dealing with the Iranian nuclear threat with or without U.S. support. Hello everyone, welcome to Global Government News. Today is Monday, March 19th, 2012, and I'm Darko. My website is ggnonline.com, and on YouTube, my channel is ddarko2012 and ddarko2013. If you're a new listener, please subscribe to the ddarko2013, because uh, that's my backup one. That's one I'll be going to here in the near future. All right, um, the first article I have up here, and the first set of articles I'm going to cover are uh, Asia, and then I'll move into the Middle East. So um, remember before I was talking about how the old Soviet Republic or the Soviet Federation, Russian Federation, basically Russia is going to be rising. They're rising right now. And it, it all goes back It goes back all the way to Webster Tarpley when I remember hearing him uh, say it, and then he wrote in an article, and he reiterated it many times. And you don't have to believe everything that he says, but when he said that, it, it, there was some ounce of truth to it because now we're starting to see it uh, come into fruition. Uh, North Korea rattles its sabers and says here an impressive display of military might from North Korea as the country stages a massive combined army, navy, and air force military drill. State television broadcasts images of the leader uh, inspecting the drills, which apparently took place on Wednesday. Uh, their leader urged officers and soldiers to always think of the battlefield and keep on maximum alert. I've also mentioned in the past in my videos about how Africa is being basically divvied up between the East and the West uh, and China tr getting in there uh, with their contracts and stuff like that, oil and, and such, as, along with the West. You know, UK is in there with Somalia, then they're doing their operations in North Africa with regime changes in uh, Egypt and Libya. This is from the UG Monitor. China's burgeoning influence around the world has reshaped global affairs, not least the economic and political issues. In a recent interview with more than 500 journalists at the Great Hall of the People, China's foreign minister, uh, sorry, foreign affairs minister, uh, spoke on a wide range of issues and underlined his country's foreign policy and external relations. He says here, advancing reform, we actively participated in global governance and helped move the international system and international architecture in a direction that serves the interests of developing countries. Says here, in recent years, the relationship between China and African countries has received wide international attention. How do you evaluate the current China-Africa relationship and cooperation? So he says some nice glossy stuff here, and then he goes on and says, some say that uh, Chinese influence in Africa is on the rise, and he goes on and basically says, I think we should say that the consensus of the international community, again, the international community, that African countries face enormous opportunities for development, i.e. Exploita exploitation, is on the rise. China to raise fuel prices. China raised its heavily regulated gasoline prices by 6.4% and diesel by 7% increase this year for the world's number two economy. So all the headlines and links will be posted in YouTube's video description. So if you'd like to go and read further, please check them out. Uh, to the Chinese and the Indians, i.e. India, go the spoils of war. And it says here the money and blood pit that is Afghanistan where the U.S. and Britain have spent more than 2,100 lives and 302 billion pounds or 580 billion dollars is about to pay the dividend, but it won't be going to the countries which have made the considerable sacrifice, the contracts to open up Afghanistan's mineral and fossil fuel wealth and to build the railways that will transport it out of the country are being won or pursued by China, India, Iran, and Russia. This is all from the same period. So again, March 19th is, is, is China's raising gas prices. Russia's going to uh, raise their wheat futures. So wheat futures slide on Russia competition. It says here, U.S. wheat futures fell after Russia said it won't put restrictions on grain exports and as favorable weather boosted expectations for the size of the next U.S. crop. And I think that that drought that they had, I think, was harped or scalar weapons. 
Russia is hosting the Eurasian Union Summit. Heads of state from Russia, Belarus, Kazakhstan, and Ukraine are among those gather gathering for a regular summit of the Eurasian Union in Moscow. Analysis say with Vladimir Putin set to return to the Kremlin as president, Russian efforts to integrate the economies within the Commonwealth of Independent States, CIS, a grouping of most of the former Soviet republics, could get a boost. India, world's top arms importer, says here India has topped a rating of the world's largest heavy arms importers released on Monday by the independent Stockholm-based International Peace Research Institute, researching into conflicts, arms uh, control, and disarmament. So this is how you know it's an international community, and it's between 2007-2011 among the most significant contracts signed by India is the purchase of 120 uh, Russian 30MK multi-role combat aircrafts and 29 MiGs and 20 British Jaguar fighters. Speaking of the international community, the top five arms importers include states in Asia and Oceania, India, South Korea, Pakistan, and they actually, the U.S. and that, they just signed a, a free trade agreement. Uh, with South Korea, Pakistan, uh, China, and Singapore, which account for 30% of all imports and major conventional weapons between 07 and 2011. We have the West changes policy in Syria as Russia's power rises. A political analyst says the West change of policy uh, via V Syria has handed Moscow the opportunity to take center stage in this regard. And I'll show a few articles following that. It says, in an interview with Le Mans, French foreign minister expressed regret over the allegiance of the Syrian Christians to their president, Bashar al-Assad. He said, while the Catholic and Orthodox religion religious organizations have tied their fate to Assad, says they should realize that they will have a better future awaiting them under the umbrella of democracy. So the article is basically saying that there's the U.S., the West, uh, and they're trying to get their regime change is failing. Their political so solution is changing and that the result will be Assad will actually remain in power. It says the contradiction may indicate that the West is withdrawing from its positions taken in the past year, and that withdrawal will allow Russia to enter the political scene of Syria more powerfully. Russia is reportedly sending 20,000 uh, to 25,000 troops to its southern regions. Multiple unconfirmed, it's unconfirmed reports, have suggested that Russia is sending between 20,000 and 25,000 federal troops to its southern region of Dagestan, says the reports come from Moscow-based analyst group, who cited local police officials and reports of large convoys seen en route. The area of Dagestan, I'm not sure if I pronounced that right, but it's only 124 miles north of Iran. But the Russian official response is for it's it's for terrorist threats. So Russian anti-terror troops arrive in Syria. So more anti-terror tr uh, troops, and it's all in the name of anti-terror usually. But really, it's just special forces, which is the new army. So that's why they're scaling back big troops, honking troops, and it's going to uh, special ops, and special forces, and drones, and the infrastructure that they have set up, which I'll get into later. The next set of videos, a Russian military unit has arrived in Syria, according to Russian news reports. Development that the United Nations Council told ABC News was a bomb uh, certain to have serious repercussions. So it says here that uh, the Iman, it's a new ship, replaced another Russian ship which had been sent to Syria for demonstration, the, demonstrating the Russian presence in the turbulent region and possible evacuation of Russian citizens. So the Western Zionist-backed Saudi Arabia sends military equipment to the Syrian rebel terror. They say it's the Saudis' initiative to stop the massacre in Syria. Think Tank says U.S. intervention in Syria could require 300,000 troops and cost $300 billion. Now, like I said, there's no freaking way because they don't do that anymore. They're going to send 300,000 troops unless they go to Central Asia and then you just have China, Russia, North Korea, you know, those countries against all the Western countries and they just kill each other until most of them are dead. But otherwise, it's going to be small contingencies, special forces and drones, like I said. And that's not just me saying it. That's based off an article that I've even covered here about... The Department of Defense scaling back, and it even said in there they're going to reduce veterans' benefits and they're going to increase special operations. Along with scaling back the amount of regular troops, Fox News poll says 78% of voters oppose sending troops through Syria. In addition, a majority thinks there should be a national debate before U.S. intervenes in hotspots around the world. Haha, <laughs> that's the democratic umbrella that you're talking about that we live on. Syria media accuses Syrian government of collaborating with Al-Qaeda. Al-Qaeda calls on Muslim world to support Assad opposition forces. Now the story's changing, guys, after this explosion. They're actually saying U.S. officials suggested Al-Qaeda militants may be joining the fray i.e. 
Uh, so the media is saying that Al-Qaeda switched sides working for Assad, and now they blew up their own government buildings. So it doesn't make much sense. As U.S. Navy to position three aircraft carriers near Iran, Iran oil exports increase in January despite sanctions. This is GGN and I'm Darko. Thank you.